This is Forged in Shadow Torch, or Fist, a very direct name. Uh, this was quite a surprise for me, because I went into it not knowing anything about it at all, not having heard anything about it from anywhere, and uh, what I actually got turns out to be a surprisingly large and very competently crafted Metroidvania that I think not enough people are going to hear about. Sometimes you just get those nice surprises, you know, when you go into something with absolutely no expectations at all because you really have no idea what you're getting yourself into, and it turns out to be something pretty memorable and really interesting, and that's exactly the case here. It's actually quite a well-done game, and it's got a lot going for it. It's definitely got a lot of content, and for a pretty good price in my opinion, too. The game world itself is going for a sort of hybrid setting aesthetically. It's actually a world of anthropomorphic animals where, in this case, you play as a bunny, and it's full of lots of other animals as well, but the the aesthetic of the game is actually pretty interesting because it's going for a sort of eastern architectural style combined with like a diesel punk aesthetic which gives it kind of a unique look. It's also pretty graphically impressive for an indie title and uh, it's on the Unreal Engine 4 and it actually even supports like ray tracing effects and all that sort of stuff so you're actually seeing all of that turned on in the background right now although I have no idea how much of a difference that'll make once YouTube's compression algorithm gets a hold of this video. Another surprise is that it's actually fully voice acted. All of the characters do in fact have voices and the voice acting is good. It reminds me of like well voice acted indie games like Dust and Elysian Tale, that sort of thing. It's a sort of similar feel. And uh, also it does have cutscenes and the cutscenes are very well animated and nicely realized as well. So this game is really just sort of surprises all around. It's actually quite a highly produced package, all wrapped up in this little kind of obscure, relatively unassuming ball. As far as all the Metroidvania stuff goes, it actually does it pretty well. It's got pretty much everything that you would expect in quite a large scale from a Metroidvania. So it's got a very large map filled with all sorts of different biomes that you can go through. And uh, handily enough, it also actually provides you an individual uh, percentage completion rate for every different area that you can go to straight from the map screen. So all you have to do is hover over the area on the map that you want to see if you've completed everything or not, and it will show you a percentage for that place. I always love it when Metroidvania games do that. It makes it a lot easier to revisit areas and go back for old secrets that you couldn't get before and things like that. And on that note, exploration is definitely very highly rewarded in this game. There are tons of different collectibles and secrets and all sorts of stuff to find, and I was actually surprised by how often I came across some sort of optional thing or secret that was actually a very useful, entirely new gadget or skill. There's actually a lot of the game's mechanics and skills that are in secrets, which is an odd choice, but I think kind of an interesting one. You'll still get the basics that you need to have just from normal progression, but there's a surprising amount of stuff off the beaten path you can find that will help you out if you decide to seek it out. So you can find all sorts of things from plant seeds, which you can turn in uh, at an NPC to get lots of money and some other rewards, including some upgrades to your character and even an upgrade to your healing item, so it's very much worthwhile to grab those whenever you can not just for the money. You can also find lots of optional bosses all around the place that will give you some extra cash and sometimes other upgrades for beating them, which is always cool to sort of stumble upon. There are also some other collectible things like posters, for instance. Posters will actually, uh, you can take them to a different NPC in the hub area and they will uh, unlock skins for your weapons. Yeah, imagine that. Weapon skins that you can actually earn in-game instead of paying for. It's a very novel concept, I know. But seriously, there are several different weapon skins for each weapon, of which there are three, and uh, they all look really cool, actually. So it's a fun thing to find these posters around the place and actually make yourself look a little bit different. You have several different resources to juggle around besides just your health. You also, of course, have money that you mostly use to either buy some things in town or to upgrade yourself at the uh, save points, which we'll get into in a little bit. There's also an energy gauge at the bottom left of the screen. It's just called EP energy points, these little orange segments, and you use those to power your various gadgets. There are four different gadgets you can find. At the most basic of which that you'll always have is your healing flask, which works basically like an Estus flask. It's a charge-based healing item, the charges of which are replenished when you go to checkpoints and uh, it takes a second to actually use it so if you're in like a, a tough boss fight or something you have to memorize the attack patterns enough to be able to know where you can stand safely long enough to actually get a drink from it and that sort of thing that you would expect from a sort of estus like healing system along with the extra twist that the energy you use for it the charges are also charges for all of your other gadgets including a homing missile launcher that you can use to uh, supplement your damage at range which is actually quite nice because your main weaponry is all melee based, so having a ranged option is worth the energy expenditure in some cases, because some uh, enemies are very dangerous to approach depending on what they're doing. And another one of the optional gadgets you can find is a counter system. There's actually a way for you to counter enemy attacks. You will put up these sort of electrical baton, like stun baton things, and if you time it right you can 
counter an enemy's incoming attack and make them vulnerable for a little while. So that's another thing that's worth the energy expenditure. It also gives you one SP, which are those blue points below your health gauge, and those are used for your main weapons. So on to those. You have three different weapons, of which you'll of course only start with one. The other two you'll find through your exploration. None of them are optional because they're also needed to open certain doors and traverse certain pathways. So this game actually does something that I really, really love when Metroidvania games do, which is it makes your extra traversal stuff also used for combat. You know, kind of like how Guacamelee did it, where each new door opening move or path revealing move is also some sort of combat maneuver that you can use. So you get sort of double use out of all of your skills. I really enjoy it when Metroidvanias do this. I think it makes the exploration a lot more organic because you're going to be using these moves for all sorts of things and none of them are just the thing that opens the blue door or whatever. There's a lot more to them than that. And this game does actually do that quite well because each of the weapons has of course lots of combat usage and also some sort of a specialized use that allows you to traverse new paths. You have the actual big fist thing itself, big huge robotic hand, that has a lot of slow but very powerful knockback attacks. It can also do some pretty fun air combos. It can throw things around and that's actually one of its main traversal features as well as the ability to pick stuff up and throw it or carry it around, stuff that's too heavy for you to carry yourself. And uh, throwing enemies into each other and into walls and things like that is always very fun, so that's appreciated. There's also a drill, which is my personal favorite of the weapons, that is super fun. It has a lot of attacks that can be extended by holding the button and just drilling for a longer period of time, and a lot of AoE based attacks that do a lot of frontal damage, although it's a bit slow to recover from these longer moves, and it can also allow you to glide around the place. You can extend it in the air like a propeller so that you glide, and you can also use it to pull and push enemies and to open certain doors that are opened by these sort of wind turbine like things. And then finally there is the whip which you will get quite late into the game, but is a very strange weapon. It's actually a lot of fun, but it's weird in that you can still move around a lot while actively using it. It actually reminds me of things like the Chrysogrim from Castlevania, and that it doesn't interrupt your other animations to actually use it. It just sort of attacks for you. So you can just whip enemies all around the place with it. You can grab onto enemies and uh, sort of propel yourself towards them. It's got quite a bit of AoE damaging attacks to it, and it's also used to grab onto these floating sort of grapple points and traverse a lot of of paths throughout the game that way. And this blue meter, these SP that you see up at the top of the screen there, are for special moves. Even though every weapon has all sorts of different combos, it also has a couple of special moves. Every weapon has two of them that cost one of these points to use, but that are extremely powerful and can be powered up even further than that if you purchase the upgrades for them and the checkpoints. The checkpoints are things that you'll find all around the world that allow you to heal yourself and restore all the charges of your various gauges just by resting at them for a second, and you can also activate them to open a sort of skill tree-like thing that allows you to use money and these things called data disks that you mostly get via exploration to purchase the various upgrades. It's this sort of three-pronged skill tree with each prong being dedicated to one of the weapons. So as you unlock new weapons, the skill tree will expand even further. You can also go back to the hub area that I mentioned earlier and train with a uh, martial arts master who will teach you some of the more advanced combos in the game, which I really recommend because the fighting system in this game is actually quite complex for a Metroidvania. And uh, as you complete his challenges, he will unlock even further nodes in the skill tree that allow each weapon to become as powerful as possible. Because of all this, this game is actually a very heavily combat-focused Metroidvania, which is somewhat unusual, but the combos that are possible with your weapons are all really satisfying and a lot of fun to actually figure out. There's some pretty advanced combo stuff here that will be familiar to you, actually, if you've played, like, a Spectacle Fighter, that sort of game. It's actually more similar to something like that than a traditional Metroidvania. You can even switch weapons mid-combo to extend them and open up even more possible moves. Some of the combos are actually pretty hard to pull off and require a lot of purchased upgrades to get all of the various attacks and skills required to use them all unlocked, but once you do really uh, get all the weapons available and sort of invest in each skill tree to unlock as many moves as possible, the combat gets actually noticeably complex and really fun to pull off. Importantly, the enemies themselves are also quite good. There's a lot of robotic enemies, that's mostly what you'll be facing, including robotic ninja frogs, just in case you were curious, and a bunch of other crazy enemies, each with different weapons, and a lot of different techniques to overcome them. So they actually are mostly uh, melee focused, just like you, although there are some ranged enemies that are mixed in as well, but a lot of the combat is in melee. 
and it makes for a pretty satisfying combat experience, uh, especially so if you get one of the other optional upgrades, which allows you to parry, by the way. Uh, the parrying works exactly like uh, Metal Gear Rising does, in that you sort of face the enemy and then push the direction towards them right before the attack connects. It's really, really fun to pull it off, and it uh, is very rewarding because it opens them up very heavily for huge counterattacks. So once you actually get a lot of these upgrades going and some of the optional stuff, the combat system definitely comes into its own, and it's an obvious focus of the game. You know, you don't design a combat system this detailed if you're not going to lean pretty heavily on it, and they definitely do. Uh, boss fights are also pretty much as you would expect for a game like this, oftentimes quite challenging and sometimes multi-phased with various different uh, attacks to learn and uh, a lot of different efficient techniques to take them down depending on the weapon combinations that you want to use. So the boss fights are actually pretty fun and uh, this is of course helped by those optional bosses that I mentioned earlier where sometimes just stumbling around the place will net you a really tough but rewarding fight. I'm also really impressed with the world of the game overall because it has a ton of background detail. Like some of the backgrounds in this game are super impressive. They go back really, really far. Even though the game is 2D, of course, the well, the movement is 2D, but the world itself is very much fully rendered in 3D detail. And there's a lot of stuff happening in the background from like entire bustling cities just going about their daily lives in the background to like some oppressive underground facilities with all sorts of crazy background details in those. They just, they put a lot of effort into each of the biomes in this game to make them all look very different and to put just a tremendous amount of detail into the world. Because of the voice acting and the very nice cutscenes and things, the story is actually quite well presented and fun to follow, and uh, it's just a really fun world to explore in general, because combat is not a chore, it's actually fun combat, so you're rewarded heavily for exploration by finding all this extra cool stuff that allows you to get more powerful, to explore more areas, to get even more powerful, you know, the, the classic Metroidvania cycle. This game does it really well, so maybe you share my surprise with this one, because like I said, this was a game that I had heard absolutely nothing of before I decided to actually try it out myself. I just requested a key for it on a whim because I thought it looked interesting and I was in the mood for a Metroidvania and that's what I'd heard this game was and it turns out to be a really competent one that's actually quite good and has really fun combat and stuff and there's a lot of love that's obviously been poured into this and I just I didn't expect any of that so do uh, check out the links in the description below this video to the Steam store page if you wish to check it out yourself. It's actually only 30 bucks which I would say is a pretty good price for a Metroidvania of this size and complexity. Uh, if I had any sort of complaint or problem, I would say the only thing that really comes to mind is sometimes the controls are a bit strange. Uh, for the most part they work fine, but occasionally it feels as if there's like no dead zone on the analog stick, sort of, or that's a very small dead zone, so you can end up facing the wrong direction and attacking in the wrong direction quite often if you're not uh, extra cautious with what direction you're pressing before you use certain attacks and things. It's sometimes easy to accidentally flick yourself in the wrong direction, which can be a problem during certain tough combat scenarios or like complex platforming. And by the way, this game does actually have some pretty punishing platforming sections with some uh, really devious traps and some other things because you will get the ability to double jump quite early on. You have a Mega Man X style wall jump that you can use from the very beginning, and you can even gain the ability to dash in midair and even dash in any direction while in the air, so when you combine all of that, it does mean that the platforming is often just as complex as the combat. So this is definitely a very uh, fully featured package that's actually surprising in its overall scope and complexity, and I was very pleasantly impressed to, to play through it myself. So thank you guys very much for watching, check it out if you wish, and I'll see you next time.